Everybody, I see my guy Greg right over here, and I want to want to welcome him to the stage. Let's give Greg a big round of applause. He's about to spark us tonight with some prayer, with some motivation, and some uh, all that good stuff. So, oh, you can't sing enough that one. <laughs> all right, all right. I think Randy just wanted a song. I think that's the real reason. I'll be, yeah, that's a hard you, uh, I can't I can't hit the notes, but yeah. thankfully the Lord says. Don't make a beautiful noise unto the Lord, but make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I can do that. I can, I can do that. Uh, but let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity um, to hear from some brothers here, um, worshiping you. God, we usher in your spirit. God, we can't wait to hear from, from Randy tonight. Pastor Randy tonight is going to bring the word and bless this food unto our bodies in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Am I, and I'm helping guys move this way, is that right? Okay. So. No, no basket. No basket. Russ, thank you for pointing that out. Absolutely, we need a basket. So, for those of you that haven't been to uh, Thursday Night Connect, I'm looking at a lot of familiar faces, so I apologize for, for repeating this. Uh, but we hope to have this to be a self-sustaining uh, ministry. So cost of running the Thursday night is about $200. Um, so anything that you can drop in there is welcomed and appreciated um, and just helps with the lights, with the food, and, and putting everything on. Um, as we go to dinner, we're going to do an orderly dismissal. So I'm going to dismiss little by little just so we keep our, our social distance. And I think I covered everything. I'm, I'm looking... Did I miss anything? Masks. Keep your masks on. So while you're eating, obviously take your mask off. Uh, but when you're not eating, please please put it on just so that we're, we're COVID friendly. That work? Amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to switch it up a little bit. I'm going to start with, uh, with these tables. So let's go to the first two tables um, to start for food. I am the coordinator for the first floor, which is the housing support, better known as GRH floor. And you know what? Maybe a, a brief uh, infomercial would be good. So Freedom Works obviously started as a Christian ministry, still as a Christian ministry, but initially was just for men who were looking to pursue their relationship with Christ. But with the purchase of this property and going from about 15 beds to 155 beds, we realized, man, what we have here is too good to just limit to men who know they want to follow Christ. We think that there's men who will follow Christ and will want to, but just don't know it yet. So we have a treatment housing floor on the second floor in this building for men receiving outpatient treatment. And then we also have the, the housing supporter GRH floor uh, that I'm coordinating uh, for men who have some barriers to getting work. Um, so we provide three meals a day, we provide housing, we provide life skills. And then through that process, there's conversations about faith. 
And for many, they come in, yes, I'm engaged in faith. I want to continue to grow. I need a community support system around me. And for others, they're unsure or they just have never really had that conversation before with people. And it's a great way to introduce them um, to freedom um, in Christ. So we have a, a few new people uh, come through this week. One of them being a familiar face, uh, Desmond. Will you will you give a quick wave? We give a clap for Desmond. So Desmond uh, comes to us uh, by way of uh, Pop Power of People, and Brother Wayne is here, who who has been a part of Freedom Works and does some work with with Pop. Uh, Desmond was here a few years ago, 2017. And didn't quite finish the, the program that he started, so he came back for redemption to complete it and and to, to move forward. So grateful for, to have you here, Brother Desmond. All right. Give him two claps. That's cool. Double up. Uh, we had another gentleman join our floor this week uh, by the name of Orlando. Um, Orlando's not here with us right now, but... Uh, Glad to have him here. And I believe, has he spent some time with Pop as well? Absolutely. All right. So two Pop brothers making their way over to Freedom Works. You say Tupac? Tupac! <laughs> uh, Steve, why don't you come on up for treatment housing? So I just want, I, I just want to recognize some new guys um, that came in this past week. Um, one is Ralph G. I know he's not here. Um, he's a new PIR resident. Um, and then Matt B. is here. Um, Matt just came in. He's a new way resident. Um, welcome, Matt. I want to raise it. And then we got a new, another new resident, Jacob B. He's a self-pay resident. I think he's at work right now. Um, and then uh, Charles C. Uh, he's a new PIR resident. He's not here. Um, and then we got Willis T. And I don't think he's here right now, but he's a new, uh, he's a new new way resident. And then uh, Eddie J. And Eddie's back in the back. Oh, yeah, Eddie. Um, he just got here today from Twin Town. I think he's going to be a great addition to the community. So, um, and then I, I just want to, uh, I don't have any clean dates to recognize. Um, that's just the way they fall on the month. Unless any of you guys got clean dates that you need to celebrate? Anybody? Um, we all got today. <laughs> and then the other things I want to recognize too is uh, Carl um, in the RNA program is going to be moving into a single room from a double. All right. <laughs> and then another thing I want to announce too is that uh, um, Dylan W came to us about a month ago um, and really liked what he saw here. Um, he's a new way resident he's graduating from new way next week and he's uh tomorrow is his 30th day he's eligible to go up to the rna floor and that's he's going to be moving up there Amen. So, <laughs> so that's all i got i like to talk a lot i didn't get enough in the first time i saw mark Sitting down here, and I remember, man, I need to give this brother a shout out. Mark, do you mind just giving a quick wave? So Mark has been at Freedom Works. Yeah, you can clap it up, Mark. That's cool. So Mark's been at Freedom Works for man, a year and a half, something like that. Sounds about right. Sound about right. And and Mark uh, has been a blessing to me. So I've been around for about two months at Freedom Works. So I've learned a lot from Mark. And Mark graduated from his, his new way uh, treatment and came down as the assistant house manager uh, on our floor, the GRH floor. 
So he's just done a tremendous job of setting culture, of providing support uh, to new residents as they come in, and being a tremendous, tremendous help to me as we get that floor going. So I couldn't, I couldn't sit back. I was like, I need to give Mark a shout out. So Mark, props to you, man. Appreciate you. Hello, I'm Mike, I'm the Participant Engagement Coordinator, and I get the pleasure of introducing our mentor speaker. Um, I got to spend some time with this, with this brother, and he's, uh, he's a real asset. And uh, without further ado, George Halinski. George Linsky. I'm a mentor. Uh, I think I've been here for probably about uh, a little over six months. And I guess my story is I guess I look at it as uh, my GPS. Whenever you put an address down on your in your GPS and then it directs you. And then I always get a little confused or busy thinking or looking at something else other than the GPS. And all of a sudden I make the wrong turn. And it redirects, which is great. Um, that would probably explain my life with uh, God. I make mistakes and then he'll uh, redirect. Mm -hmm. And one thing about the GPS and God um, and God must have helped make the GPS because the GPS always keeps rerouting and so does God. God's love never stops. Um, no matter what type of mistake you make and no matter if you're the president of the United States or if you're at Freedom Works, you're going to be making mistakes and, re and rerouting. So... Without further ado. <laughs> Thank you, George. And I want to introduce our director, our fearless leader, George Lang. So there's a lot of new faces here today, so for those who don't know me, my name is George, I'm also in recovery, I'm about 17 years, I just celebrated in the spring, 17 years, been in and out of, uh, well, I was for applause, thank you, but um, in and out of uh, incarceration myself, you know, and uh, came to Freedom Works back in 2006, had an investment, a deposit that was put in me um, of my faith in Christ started in 2005. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about this in a minute, so I'm going to skip over that. But I get the Freedom Works. And the whole vision of Freedom Works is to be able to support guys like me that come out of a whole lifetime of just uh, dysfunction. Um, you guys can fill in all the colors. You know, it's very dysfunctional. And live a life of faith. And... Uh, there was a lot of areas that um, I felt like I didn't need support in, but I needed support in this. Like I've always been somewhat good. I could hit the ground running. I could find housing. I could do this. I could do that. But I didn't know how to live my life out in faith. And I just was exposed when I was in prison to the prison fellowship, the IFI program at that time, to what a community looked like. And I heard the vision of Freedom Works when I was in prison in, in Lionel Lakes. And that vision... I caught something there. I just caught something. So anyway, I came as a participant. Then I started volunteering. Um, I really volunteered in a selfish way uh, because I, I just needed to stay busy. I've, I've been, you know, I've shared that a lot with you, Randy. I needed to stay occupied. So people would tell me all the time, you know, that oh, man, you serve God, great. You know, and I, for me, it wasn't serving God at that time. It was really serving myself and just trying to stay. Busy, so I didn't go back. I grew up on the west side of St. Paul, 
I didn't want to go back to my old life, and I just needed to stay running. My engine stayed on all the time. And then something transferred, you know, it started to migrate. It was about me, and, and at the same time, you know, thinking about my brother that was next to me. For those who are in the, in the RNA program, mm -hmm. phase four or phase three, would be speaking truth to your brother, thinking outside the box, right? Thinking not only yourself, but thinking of the next person in developing community. And I came on a staff, and I'm gonna speed this story up. I get to a point, I'm sitting in a boardroom now, years and years later, and I'm being asked what the vision of FreedomWorks is. And uh, as I tried to answer what that vision was, I was kind of somewhat interrupted, and uh, other people would chime in what they thought the vision was. And I simply just, when I got a chance to say it, it was, basically this simple, what was wrong with the vision that God gave to Fred? The one that I came out of, the, the, the guy that came out of dysfunction, what's wrong with, with that one? We, we got into it, a whole nother kind of era of freedom works and I don't look at it as negative, I think we learned a lot during that time, but I hung on to that vision and I hung on to the vision and the things that I incorporated inside prison fellowship and the men that surrounded me and women, but the men, the mentors that surrounded me and we carried that torch over to this property. And I love the way Greg just summed that up. Where's Greg at? You just really just articulated that very well to be able to say it, we wanted to reach out regardless of what your faith was. We had to reach out and have a space. I wanted to be a part of providing a place for you regardless of what your faith was. Because I remember when I was in Fairbolt in segregation and I asked God to come into my life, I didn't know who God was other than the creator of trees and the planet maybe. You know, that's it. But I was in such a broken state, that's where I was at. And then through uh, people surrounding me, and one in particular would help me know who Christ was and start to develop that. But before that happened, if I would have applied to come to Freedom Works, I would have been turned down because I didn't know who Jesus was. I couldn't confess Jesus. I didn't know who he was at that point. So we, the vision was to be able to bring forth different, meet guys where they're at. I love when Steve came up and he lowered the mic. And he said, I'm, I'm going to lower it to where I'm at, you know. And that's the model of really of Christ. When he was preaching on, on the mount, he always came down to where the people were at. You know, meet them right where they're at. Meet them at the point of pain. My point of pain, I don't know what your point of pain is, but if it's anything like mine, man, it was intense. And I was desperate to get a new life. I didn't want to go back to prison for the fourth time. New charge, fourth new church. You know, not to mention the violations, but I, I lost my family. There was no hope. I remember sitting in um, segregation and just having nothing. I mean, you might as well, the thoughts of suicide ran through my head. Just might as well end it. Because you're never going to be able to pick this one up. Even though I've always been able to bounce back. Each time I came out, there was no hope. I didn't have no hope. But then uh, the hope of Jesus Christ was placed in me. And I would start to glean on that, and people would pour on that. That's what Freedom Works is about. That's what I'm passionate about. I was sharing with staff today. I don't have the skills that Greg has. I don't have that ministerial, that evangelist to be able to sit down and be able to pastor somebody. Uh, the brother I'm being introducing here, I think after worship, um, tonight's speaker, being able to meet me right where I was at. I mean, I, I may have some piece. I've learned a lot. But my passion is creating a platform for us, and I'm talking about us who have been there and done it, to be able to come out and we don't have to return back to our old past. Amen. That's what I'm passionate about. Yeah. I don't have to be the front runner. I don't have to be the one, you know, shaking you down and shaking the gospel into you. You know, that ain't me. You know, but God has supplied, hanging on to that torch, hanging on to that vision. Look at what God has done. I mean, you know, so he's taking a wreck, you know, the wretched man that I am, and that given me a new life. And people people tell me all the time, pats on the back. And, you know, they are not, you know, uh, they're welcome to a degree. But I didn't do this. I didn't. I was a part of it. I was lucky enough to be selected. When that predestination went down, I don't know. Or when that selection. That's theology. But uh, what I do know is like the blind, blind man that was speaking to the Pharisees when he was trying to explain to them, all I know is I was blind, and now I can see. Yeah, all I know is I spent a lifetime incarcerated and addicted to drugs, and now I'm free. Amen. That's what I know. Yeah. That's what I know. And to be a part of whatever God is doing, that's what I want to be. That's right where I want to be. And um, 
So uh, today as a director, it may give the appearance as the front run runner. And I know a lot of people have that mindset. But David said, King David said, I'd rather be the doorkeeper yeah. than being out there with the heathen, so to right. speak, back there to right. that old life. Right. I want to dwell in the house of the Lord for the remainder of my life, no matter what position that holds. Amen. So that's just me, a little piece of me. But I know there's others that have joined uh, God on this journey that um, some chose not to and some did. And we're thankful for those who did. And uh, so now I kind of want to go into a piece about kind of an update, if you will, of utilities. I was gone for a few days. I know it's gotten cold. And I'm glad I didn't get no tomatoes thrown at me, blaming me for the heat. <laughs> but you could, actually, because I made a decision last year to go a direction that didn't pan out so good. And we started to install our new boiler system. It's a half a million dollar system, by the way. And uh, actually, it would have been, if we would have paid out a contractor to do it in the degree that we were being led, it would have been a million. It's not a little furnace. And, uh, well, last December, um, I think it was about the 10th, the contractor <clears throat> boogied on down the road with our money, piece of the money. And, uh, and we were left holding this ice cube, and it had no heat. And we were out here with blow torches, <laughs> so to speak, and propane and getting the building heated. Well, now we're into reinstalling all the equipment that we had purchased. And it, good news is, praise God, I'm sorry it's been cold off and on, kind of inconsistent. As of next week, by the end of next week, the new boiler systems will be on. Amen. So I just want to praise God for that. So but I'm going to land a plane here, but for those who can help, now we got to pay for it. So as I said, remember the parking lot? Said the same thing. Ain't that parking lot beautiful? <laughs> yeah, now we gotta pay for it. Ain't the heat nice? Yeah, now we gotta pay for it. So for any of those, there's so many needs. The holidays are coming up. We want to make that special. Keep development, and you guys know, keep the development of the ministry in prayers because we need to meet the needs of the guys that we're meeting right where they're at. And heat would be nice. Heat would be nice. Was that? I think I'm gonna introduce the worship team. And uh, so if we can get them to come back up. Before Ron falls asleep. No, I love worship. I love worship. One of the things, a guy asked me to be in a choir. And I said, you're crazy. And this is an old life. In prison. I said, hey, you're nuts. I ain't never joined that choir. Well, I joined the choir. And this brother continued to pour in. And he, God rest his soul. He passed away. His name was Aaron Burke. Good, best friend of mine. And uh, But he, he gave me a principle that I'm never going to let go. And there's power in worship. Power in prayer. Power in worship. And that when we came over here, when I came into this room, there was nothing like it is now. It was full of junk. I said, this is where we're going to be worshiping God in this room. And what's coming with that is a worship team. We never had one. and uh, But I didn't know what was going to happen. But So this is actually fulfillment of a vision that God had gave us to do with the whole campus. And so these brothers, I met Ron in Fairville Prison. This is the Fairville team, pretty much, ain't it? It is. Touch a rush city. You know, a little, little, a little rush. A little, little Fairville. But uh, the principles of worship, and we're going to learn them as we go. We don't have to hear the whole theology of it now. But you know what? If you feel free to get up and raise your hands in worship and feel the freedom that we have in Christ and worshiping Him, you're going to feel some power. God bless you guys. Back up here. This, uh, this song has to uh, has to do with the uh, the stronghold of the Lord and the, being um, a strong tower, the uh, the glory of the Lord. And um, I was kind of looking into it but, uh, a little earlier, and uh, and all the uh, uh, the towers that were created throughout time were. Uh, ineffective always one way or another but not the Lord's and that's why I come to find out that those who ran into his tower were saved
Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. of support around you. And when you look at King David, King David had one of his counselors was name was Asaph. Anybody know who Asaph is? I'm not going to put you on the spot. But he was the lead worshiper. And he's when they said they sent before the army, they sent the worshipers to go out to the enemy to conquer that. It was through the worship of Christ. And David knew that principle. He knew that principle. Well, hey, you know what? So I'm going to get off of that. I just want to thank you guys, man. I want to bless you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just come before you and thank you, Lord, for sending these servants, Lord, these worshipers, Lord, that you have been pouring into from way back when, Father God, for us to be blessed to be able to come in your presence. And I ask, Father God, to lift them up to you, protect them. I know that they have a target, a big target on their back, Lord. The enemy loves to mess with the worshipers, Father. So we just lift them, them up to you, Father God. I ask to protect them. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. You guys, that was awesome. Thank you again. So, as I said a moment ago, so I believed in God. I believed in God. Didn't know who God was. Six months later, I, I, I somewhere around that point, I don't know the date, but I asked Jesus Christ to come into my life. What happened between that time? Our speaker happened. So God sovereignly in his ways, in his orchestration of, of putting people in my life, would send me to Lionel Lakes and put Randy Washington, Pastor Randy, into my life. And he was my biblical counselor. This morning as I was driving in and I was processing things, what came to me, and I don't know where this is. I never had time to look this up. 
but the student will never is never greater than his teacher, the principal of that. So I wear two hats with Randy. One is I'm the I'm the director. He's he's a staff member with me, and the other is that I always God was always telling me. He always reminds me, listen, because this man had my back when nobody did. This man loved me when there was empty, there was no hope. This is the man that taught me new pieces of the word of God. And it's okay to have a rhema word. That rhema meaning it's what I read today may be taken out of contents for you, but it wasn't out of contents for me. And religious people would say, that's not what that means. That's not what that means. Well, that's what it means to me. And so Randy gave me the permission, taught me the permission to be able to freely be able to digest God's word. This brother right here is a powerhouse. Yeah. Power house. Yes, sir. This is the guy that's going to heat the third floor. Hey. Yeah. Tonight there won't be no complaints. It'll be hot up there. Give it up for the brother. That was quite the introduction. Thank you, sir. That $50 is coming your way again. So it's all good. Every time. Every time. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's about time for me to wind down because I do have a big mouth and I tend to be long winded. And so uh, I'm hopefully uh, going to uh, have the purpose of not getting you out of here at 8.30 p.m., uh, but rather uh, uh, by 7.30. How about that? Does that sound good? All right. Perfect. Um, so the, 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 the message title that, that, that God laid on my heart for us tonight um, is really a, um, a, a couched in a purpose. And the purpose is to raise an awareness for us and to give us some very simple but specific actions that will yield results. All right, so we're going to raise an awareness and we're going to uh, uncover some, some, some actions and some uh, plans that are going to yield some results. And, and this is uh, uh, the title of, of what we're going to talk about tonight is The Enemy at the Gates. The enemy at the gates. Now, how many people in this room like to win? Yeah. Everybody likes to win, right? I have yet to come across a person who just loves defeat. You might not be able to tell by my jersey <laughs> tonight. <laughs> but I, I definitely want to be associated with winners, right? And, and there's some challenges with that. So whenever you have a, an aspect or a time frame where you have to decide that there's winners and losers... Uh, one of the things that is really important for us to know, and it's key for us to, to observe, is that uh, we have things, people, objects, stuff that's out there that, that, that are uh, uh, intentional about causing us to stumble. We have things in our lives that, 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 that make themselves uh, present and aware that keep us stuck. We have things that, that want to not allow us to experience that, that goal that we all want, which is to win, but actually keep us in a place where uh, we are, we ain't winning, right? We, we're just, we're stuck, we're losing, we're, 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 we're experiencing lack and loss and, 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 and depression and heaviness and burdens and, and all kinds of other junk that's in our lives that is not about what God has called us and created us to be. And I got to tell you that uh, a lot of us can recognize these, these principles and these pieces in our lives. Uh, some people to, to more of an acute uh, um, space than other people. When I say acute, I mean uh, uh, more more persistent challenges. Like there's there's ways that sometimes we lose that can't nobody see us lose it except us. We just know it. And then there's ways that we lose that everybody sees. <laughs> right? Yeah. I like this jersey. Every there's no faking the funk. Like we know we lose it. Right? Yeah. And so uh, wherever you are on that pendulum swing. I want to communicate tonight. I believe that God has set us apart to have an agenda to, again, get awareness of, of just a different picture of what the enemy looks like as he's attacking our gates. But then talk about the, the, the very important principles that are necessary for us to be making the progress that we need to be making. Because God has designed us to move from glory to glory. He's designed us to have abundant life, life more abundantly, when we have an enemy who's coming to steal, kill, and destroy He's coming for us to experience fullness and blessing so that we can be a blessing to our children and our children's children yeah. and not a weight and a burden. Amen. He wants to put us in a position, and I just kicked something. He wants us to put us in a position where we can walk into spaces 
and not have our heads stuck to our, chi our, our chest yeah, yeah. out of shame and despair, right, right. right? But we can walk with our heads up, looking and making notice that we can have an impact, a powerful impact yeah. in the world around us. Amen. That's the hope that God has for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so let me start off with a little bit of inspiration for, for this message. This, this, this message uh, uh, is not something that... Uh, that hit out of a devotional, um, I would say that uh, there's three different unique places that uh, I had a light bulb moment that, that pertains to this message. And it's weird. I get I get revelation or seeds of messages or thoughts or ideas uh, just dropped on me all the time from all kinds of different places and spaces. It just it just happens like that for me. And so uh, my first light bulb moment for us about gates and about victory and about being sick and tired of being sick and tired is couched in my own struggles. It's couched in my own struggles. So some of the things that, uh, when you get to know me, and I'm not here to, to throw up on you with all the different hurdles and, and things that I've had to make, but I just want to let you know that I've had some, some significant uh-ohs in my life. Significant. And, and I'm so smart that a lot of the significant uh-ohs in my life were not just one-time events. These were cyclical Right. And, and, and in many spaces and places that some of the things that I struggled with and struggle with in cyclical basis, I could almost like anticipate when the heat of the moment would occur. I can anticipate when I would find myself taking losses like big losses where I'm walking around stuck with my chin to my chest in shame. Is anybody else like that? Yeah. Cycles like that? Yeah. Now, now, as a person who, and, and, and I got to tell you that those cycles for me did not stop after I said yes to Jesus. Now, I want to tell you, it was night and day. God redefined me. He restored me. He replaced me into a place uh, uh, that once I was in a place of darkness and despair, and I did get placed with hope and in a place of a new kingdom. But I got to tell you that some of those cycles for me still continue. And, 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 and in certain spaces and places for me, uh, uh, there were times where I had to like take inventory of myself and say, yo, enough is enough. Enough is enough. This destructive, pointless, idiotic cycle, God, there's got to be more. And I'm going to tell you that there is more for us in all kinds of different places in our lives. Second place of inspiration. This is kind of a weird place. I was happening to watch. Uh, I was happening I was watching a movie, right? Uh, how many people are, are, are fans of the Lord of the Rings? If you're a fan of that, yeah, that's a Two Towers. Anybody remember the Two Towers movie? All right, so if you're going to watch those movies, I pack a lunch. Like, those mugs are long, right? Two and a half, three hours long. Uh, but there was a particular scene where all the bad, like, ghoulish, demonic, crazy, like, goblinish looking, it kind of reminded me of George. Them, them guys. <laughs> I'm just joking. That's my brother. He loves me. It's all good. Uh, uh, the kingdom of darkness, they had come to this wall, and they were attacking it with all their might. Like, they were launching, like, these creative catapult things and these fiery things and this and that, and they were, ah, and shooting arrows and swords and all that kind of stuff, and I'm captivated. I'm at the wall. I'm just eating the popcorn. It's delicious. It was, it was wonderful. And then this scene happened in the movie where uh, somehow the enemy could not get through. And then all of a sudden they started to talk about how that same city with that very same wall was under attack years and years. Maybe it was hundreds of years. This is the Lord of the Rings, right? A long time ago earlier, and somehow the enemy found a weak spot in the wall. And so what the enemy did was they said, oh, we're going to fake it. We're going to pretend like we're really forcing our attack here. But they sent the side sneaky, yeah. sneak, sneak attack around the other side where the weakness of the wall was. And they used that space to launch an attack yeah. so they could get into the city and, 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 and reap utter destruction. Mm, and in my mind, I thought, oh, if that's not God, right. where did he steal that from in the scriptures, right? Because that's how the enemy works in us, yeah. right? We can be strong in our devotional life, come through with fasting and prayer, all kinds of other things in our life that are going really, really well. But somehow, that old tricky enemy knows the exact scheme, the exact circumstance, the exact situation to toss our way to get us stuck Man. and to keep us stumbling. Yeah. Can I tell you in real life what it was like for me? So in real life what it was like, I almost destroyed my family. 
I almost, almost destroyed my marriage. I almost destroyed my kids. These things are the most important things for me in my life. And they're so important because for me growing up, family was um, especially a nuclear family that, that it was not a part of my life. It wasn't a part of my growing up. It was something that I longed for, right? Uh, and, and so as I'm living uh, uh, and, 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 and doing stupid stuff with, with mind and, and, and lust and, 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 and females, I end up in this, this um, situation where I'm, having, I'm spending too much inappropriate time with a female coworker, right? And I gotta tell you, in the span of eight months, this is a tough, I'm saved, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm an associate pastor of a church. I'm doing outreach at a youth place, right? And, and, and this is the circumstance that I find myself in, this tug of war, right? And do believe that after uh, uh, spending time with this person that was inappropriate, as I'm driving home, guess what the Holy Spirit's doing? Huh? Y'all been there too, right? What does he do? He speaks to you. What's the guilt saying? What's the, boy, you know you ain't supposed to, right? All of that in my mind, and it's a tug of war for me, right? Did you know that there were significant times where I repented? And I said, Lord, I draw a line in the sand. I'm not going there no more. And here's the weakness of the wall. I would walk, and I'm telling you, this is about five times, no lie. I would walk sometimes after having a prayer session like that, after having a time like that with God, I would walk into a random coffee shop, and there that person would be. The weakness in a wall. That's the second place of inspiration. The third place of inspiration for me uh, came out of a curiosity. I was uh, finding myself in the scriptures and I was looking at um, this word Zion. Y'all have seen the word Zion in the Old Testament? You ever wondered like what that word is all about? The people of Zion, Mount Zion, this Zion, that Zion. Well, I'm not going to get too deep into it because it would be a rabbit trail for my message. But I want to make a point to you about that. Zion is very closely associated to the city of Jerusalem. First point. Second point. King David, uh, when he was ascending or getting to a place where he was uh, about to be king and, and, and take over Israel and, and, and Jerusalem, he went to war against the city of Jerusalem, okay? That's the second point. The third point is the way that he got victory over Jerusalem wasn't that he took over the whole city like they did with Jericho. What he did was he went and he took, uh, attacked a strong tower, the strong place, the, the strongest place in the city, right? And once he overcame that space, once he took over that space, the rest of the city was his. The strong tower, that strong place, right? So, so what does this have to do with like our talk today about the enemy being at the gates? What I want to tell us tonight is in terms of, of, of awareness is that once we get to a space where we recognize the enemy's arrow, his trick, the way that he's trying to cause all of us to topple, I believe that we can start to break through and stop some of these destructive cycles that we're walking out and that we're living every day in our life. We have the ability to have victory. Amen? Amen. So what's with the gates? What's with this city gate thing? All right? So um, I want to share with us that um, as, I, as I step into this, this message, I want to tell you that everything that, that, that we are is valuable. You as an individual, you are valuable. You're the apple of God's eye. There's so much in you around uh, uh, um, God's design for you and why you're here. It's not just uh, uh, random. Uh, the gifts and talents that you have, they're not just for you. All of those things are precious. And how many people know that when you have something precious, when you have something valuable, you don't just leave it laying right. wide out in the open, right? Right, right? You don't just leave it laying around. What do you do with it? You lock that up, right? And so a uh, part of us is uh, uh, we have this, this, this biblical imagery, I believe, that, that, that uh, uh, a part of our life, a part of our functioning is that the, 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 the most important part of us, that life that we have, that influence, all of that is being protected by uh, uh, certain things. And some of the things that, that is offering a protection for us, we don't fully know. 
we, we don't have a full understanding of, but it's just there, right? And so, so a, a part of our existence and, and part of our uh, uh, being is, is, is knowing that there's a wall, there's that protection that's around us and, and under or behind that wall, associated with that wall, is some of the fullness of who we are. And I want you to think about purpose, and I want you to think about potential, and I want you to think about influence. And I want you to think a little bit about, uh, uh, um, let's just, uh, uh, George, he just got up and he was sharing for uh, a while ago, right? So I want to I want to think about the fact that uh, you said how many years? Seventeen years sober. Before that, your life was a mess, right? It's an understatement. Understatement, <laughs> right? But now, and I'm not trying to um, puff George up, but I want us to understand and realize that everything that God had for George to be a blessing to you and to be a blessing to me right now was around him and in him 17 years ago. It was around him and in him 20 years ago. It was around him and in him. The Bible says that before he was formed in his mother's womb, God gave George gifts and talents and abilities to be a blessing to other people. Right? And I'm going to tell you that George is no better nor is he any worse than any man in this room. The very same ability to influence, to be a blessing, to, 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 uh, to be a, a, um, a resource to hurting people, you have it in you as well. Y'all believe that? Yeah. Yeah. Say, I have it in me. I have it in me. Say, I have it in me. I have it in me. That is true. To every single last one of us. There's so much wisdom in this room. There's so much life in this room. There's so much blessing in this room. We don't even know the fullness of what God has for us. But our enemy can see. And I think that's what our enemy is good at doing. He, he finds out what the potential is in us. And he goes about launching schemes and ways to get us to distract from that goodness and that blessing. And instead of being a blessing, we can be a curse. So if God has designed you to be a, a father who raises up a child who comes out confident and full of purpose and he's going to um, do good things in the earth, can't you imagine that as a man, your enemy's going to say, let me figure out a way to get him to do something different than what he's originally a purpose to do. Are you understanding where I'm coming from? All right. So that's the first awareness that God loves each and every one of us. He has purposed us, right? Without regard to our mistakes, without regard to our challenges, God loves us. He's given us purpose. He's given us potential. And you're worth protecting. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I want to pivot and talk a little bit about access points real fast. All right? I want to raise an awareness... I want to raise an awareness that our enemy tries to make us stumble and cause us to stumble in some unique ways. There's all kinds of ways that we're all aware of. Like everybody's aware of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Everybody's aware of that. So let me hit these four real quick pieces real fast. Have you ever thought about how your thought life and your emotions are a devil's playground? Right. Right. Let me say it again. Have you ever thought about how your thoughts and your emotions have often betrayed you. Yep, yep, yep. Have you ever thought about how your thoughts and your emotions, even though you're thinking, man, this is the right decision, I'm gassed up, I'm amped up, I know the way to go, yep. only to find out that it was a trap. Yep. Pay attention to thoughts and emotions, right? Mm -hmm. One of the goodest, the, one of the best ways that we can do that as a body, as a family here on this campus is to get into community mm -hmm. and not surface community. Get into community where you can share and talk about what you're thinking about certain circumstances. What am I thinking about money? What am I thinking about this relationship? What am I thinking about these friends? What am I thinking about when I get angry, upset, frustrated? And to be able to share those things in a community, I got to tell you, brothers, when we begin to trust each other and get out of our shell of, of selfishness and isolation, 
That's a blessing. Amen. Second access point. Our desires. Yep. Huh? Yep. Our desires. Every single last one of us. have. I don't care if you're 95 or 21. Like my man Adam over here. <laughs> I don't care how old. We all have desires. We all have things that motivate us. We all have things that move us forward. Things that we, we strain for, we stress for, we reach for. We all have goals, right? Yeah. Have you ever thought about the fact that some of the goals that you have may not be God goals? Yeah. Might be good goals, but it may not be God goals. I think about uh, um, the desire to have a significant relationship that's romantic, right? And you think about, man, I just, I just need a I just need her, man, right? The desire. And then you think about all of the different characteristics that you toss out there of, of, of the way that person's got to be. Have you ever thought about the fact that that could be a trap? And those desires that you're voicing are very temporary and have nothing to do with virtue and goodness and the things that you really need at your core? Come on, fellas, can we wake up? I mean, how long are we going to continue to make the same mistakes over and over and over again with the people that we choose to pursue in relationships? When are we going to stop bumping our head against the wall thinking that just because that girl is five foot five and has got long, dark hair and, and whatever, that she's the one for me? How long is it going to take us to get off of those base motivations and those base desires that have led us Absolutely nowhere. Nowhere. Now the scripture does say that sin for a season is entertaining. Woohoo, right? <laughs> but I gotta tell you, you get with the wrong person, the wrong person will destroy your life. Right. Am I lying? No. I said, Am I lying? No. Absolutely not. That's an access point. And I know I honed in on females, but we've got all kinds of desires that we have to, to contend with. Sometimes it's esteem. Sometimes it's finances. Sometimes it's reputation. Sometimes it's just being the life of the party. Sometimes it's just wanting to feel safe or be safe. All that stuff. Hey, evaluate that and ask yourself, is that where God really wants me? Ignorance is an access point. It breaks my... I got to... This is a community where we want men who roll up their sleeves and do the hard work to get better at life, right? This is this kind of community. So when we have an opportunity that gets rolled out there in terms of a class or a mentor or a, 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 a seminar or, or some place where you can get out of your ignorance and you just decide, uh, I'd rather watch the Honeymooners <laughs> I'd rather be on Facebook my brothers you are allowing yourself to stay in a cycle that will keep you trapped for God knows how long get out of ignorance put yourself in a position where you get new information so you can start to make new choices and start to soar and be the man that God has called you to be amen amen Last one, access point, warning, covenants and curses. Covenants and curses. Men, sometimes in our hurt, sometimes in our pain, sometimes in our frustration, we make allegiances to things that we shouldn't be making allegiances to. We, 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 get, into, we get into bed with things that we shouldn't get into bed with. And I don't care if it's friends I don't care if it's gangs. I don't care if whatever, right? That stuff, if you want to break cycles, you got to say no to that right away. Amen? Amen. All right. I'm going to speed up real fast here. Um, awareness number two. Those are all the first awarenesses. Those, those areas of thoughts, desires, ignorance, covenances, right? Uh, uh, that's the first awareness. The second awareness is I want us to know that God has called every single one of us to be stewards. Right. The gift, the life, the things that God has placed in us, he's called us to be stewards. So uh, in, in Luke chapter 16, verse.
verses 1 through 13. I want you to go back and read it. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, story about an unjust steward. It's about a man who had all the gifts, all the life, all of the ability that he was kind of um, charged with overseeing. And in that uh, oversight, he decided that he was going to abuse the gifting that God has given him. By the way, in all of those first awareness areas that we had talked about, uh, there's, got, there's a form of abuse. There's a form of not engaging the way God wants us to engage. That's what abuse is all about. Well, this man was abusing the relationship that he had with the property owner as a steward. And uh, the property owner said, hey, um, I heard that you're abusing what you've been given charge of. It's time for you to be held into account. And so here's an action that the guy did. I want to share with you real quickly two actions that's vital for us to, to kind of get clear. Uh, the first thing is he, uh, the first action in verse 3, said that after uh, the, the, the property owner, the master came to him and said, hey, you've been abusing stuff, it's time to be held in account. Uh, the man said, uh-oh. And he made an accurate assessment of his condition. He made an accurate assessment of his condition. Uh, fellas, I got to tell you, when we have areas in our life, when we have those weaknesses in our wall, when we have of those areas that are being overrun by our enemy, the most important thing that you can do is you can tell yourself the truth. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we as men don't do is we don't tell ourselves the truth. Right. It's gonna be all right. It's not that big of a deal. I can just grin and bear it. Tell yourself the truth quickly, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. All right, you made an accurate assessment. Uh, and, and Luke chapter 16, verse 8, um, after he made the assessment, he stepped into action to solve his situation. He began to act very shrewdly, one translation says, or uh, another translation says he was clever or wise or astute. He was prudent. Basically, uh, um, he made a plan to change his circumstance. Right. And I'm going to tell you that a lot of you men in here, not everybody, not everybody, not everybody. But a lot of you men in here have, have recognized and you've made an accurate assessment that drugs and alcohol has been destroying your life. You've told yourself the truth that I've got to humble myself and get myself out of that circumstance and situation. And God be praised, you decided I'm going to do a different action. I'm going to come to Freedom Works. I'm going to get into New Way. I'm going to get into PIR. I'm going to get to reentry and ask care. I'm going to submit myself to a community that's going to help me grow. And somebody say that's a good thing, right? That's a very good thing. Because for once in your life, you're interrupting the cycle. But I have to tell you that there's some diligence that's also due there for us. It's not just a one-time quick hitter, right? Making the initial decision is not enough. You got to continue on in the process. You got to be willing to go through the mundane discipline of saying yes every single day. Right. Somebody said earlier, "Hey, uh, how many people have a sober date that they're celebrating?" And nobody said anything, but my guy Buck said, "Today, that's right, right today, that's right, today." That's that that rhythm of saying yes to God's spirit, to saying yes to God's plan every single day, every single moment. And I'm going to tell you, as I round this up today, when we're talking about the enemy at the gates and being aware of how you're being attacked, I'm going to tell you that if you make an accurate assessment of your circumstance and situation, and if you choose an aggressive, bold action that is continual and not just an emotional high, I'm going to choose to do it today, but if you get into a rhythm of being faithful, you are sowing a seed of victory. You're sowing a seed of life. Yep. You're sowing a seed that breaks the cycle, that causes you to begin to, I mean, you're, you're going to surprise yourself. One day you'll wake up and look around and you're going to say, what? Are, how did I? It's happening. Mm -hmm. Brothers, you have living testimonies in this room. Of men who are not perfect. Somebody say not perfect. not perfect. You have men who are not perfect. But you have men who are pursuing the victory. Yeah. And we are not in chains. Right. We are pursuing victory. 
We make mistakes, we dust ourselves off, and we hit it again because we understand the principle of having an accurate assessment and choosing a bold action and being dedicated to that. I think about my guy Steve back over here. Steve, they call him the hammer. That brother had me crying in the office two days ago. Because, because Steve knows this cycle, how to break these cycles. He walks this rhythm out, right? I think about George. I think about uh, uh, my man Mike back here. All this, a buck. There's so many men who have dedicated themselves to breaking this cycle. Brothers, let's lean in together and say yes to the fullness that, 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 that God has for us. Because it's not just for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Last thing I'll say before I close is that um, in this passage, in this, in this section of scripture, in Luke chapter 16, verses 1 through 13, um, the Lord, uh, as he's kind of rounding up the parable, begins to talk about, hey, from a temporary standpoint, if you get trusted with being faithful with the small, mundane, temporary stuff, you're going to be entrusted with much. Yeah. And he says, if you can make the right choices in this temporary mindset or in this temporary space and begin to make process and have victory, it's going to echo from eternity because you're going to make a wise choice yeah. as it pertains to evaluating where you are in your relationship with God. Yeah. The most important relationship that you're going to have. And you're going to be honest with yourself that hmm, the bold answer, the bold reaction is not in me trying and trying again. It's in the person and the work of Jesus the Christ. Yeah. And you're going to realize that the most important, mundane, boring, rhythmic thing that you can do is you can say yes to Jesus every day. Yeah. And you can walk with him and you can allow him to live his life through you. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, brothers, you will be blessed beyond measure when you say yes to that path. Can we pray together? Yeah. Father, I just thank you and I praise you right now for just the power of your word. God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart have been acceptable in your sight. I pray that the words that have been spoken tonight, Lord God, would be in time words and on time words for men in this room who are looking for wisdom of how to break through cycles. And I pray, Father God, that as men are pursuing uh, bold action towards you, that they would consider uh, just a reinvestment in connecting, Lord God, in those various spaces that you have them in, whether it be in treatment or in some of the classes that we offer on campus or in their church life or in their devotional life or or even uh, this coming Saturday, Lord God, or excuse me, next Saturday with Wraith. Lord, uh, empower us to step into those spaces with boldness, with hope, and with expectation. Because you have good things in store for us. Lord, you want us to be in a position where we're not victims any longer. But we're taking this battle, uh, 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 not uh, 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 having our gates being attacked, but, but we're taking this battle to the enemy's gates. Because you said in your word, Lord, that you have built your church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Help us to attack. Help us to take back ground. Help us to live the fullness of life that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, guys. I appreciate your, your, your patience with me.